What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we've been expecting this movie for quite some time. We've spoken on numerous occasions uh, uh, on this film, um, expecting a lot. Um, but we're going to do a similar breakdown review of what we did with Black Adam. I think we'd like that format because there's a lot to talk about in a lot of these films. And we just don't want to just now we're down to just one video because there's a lot of aspects to discuss. So we're going to do overall impressions and we're going to do uh, a video on story, direction and visuals. Then like Black Pan uh, Black Adam, we only had one lead. For this film, we had two leads, Black Panther and um, Submariner. Um, then we'll do the supporting cast and then we'll talk about the future. Brian, let's talk about our overall impression. And by the way, if you, had it, if you haven't seen it by now, don't watch this video. <laughs> Go watch it and then come back. But Brian, do you want to take the lead on your overall impression? Because I don't think we've spoken too much about what we thought about this film. So I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about this before I go on, because I'm assuming we're going to agree on a lot of the things and I don't want to be repetitive. So you go ahead and take the lead. Your overall impression on the Black Panther Wakanda Forever film. Yeah, and I'll give the, as usual, I'll give the numbers as well. So I think my tagline for this was... I was both very impressed and moderately disappointed in the same, within the context of the two hours and 40 minutes. I think this film's high notes are quite high. I think there are moments, there are performances, there are sequences in this film that illustrate and underscore like why Ryan Coogler is a great director, why some of these performers, I think, tapped into both the emotion of Chadwick Boseman's passing, but also, you know, what, what has made this particular strand of the Marvel Universe in some ways more interesting and more layered than some of the other pieces of property that they've been that they've been putting out. So those were the highs. I do think there were some disappointments. There was some clutter. There was some stuff that wasn't tight uh both visually and storytelling wise and so i don't think this movie was quite as consistent as the original black panther film but i want to get back to that because i almost don't feel it's fair i saw this movie twice everyone's going to compare because it is a sequel to black panther one but i actually don't think that's fair to this movie I, this, these are two very different types of films and i enjoyed it more the second time because i detached from the idea that this was black panther 2 and i just watched it as wakanda forever one i think people liked this movie less than the first because the first was a much simpler story mm -hmm. This one was much more complex. Different things going on at the same time, but you're right about the clutter, continue. So from the numbers perspective, a little bit of a mixed bag. And I'm, when we get to the future discussion, I, I'm trying to sort out what this means. Um, so Rotten Tomatoes, 84%, within the 84%, did see a lot of people in that four out of five range. So the people that liked it were generally giving it high, but not perfect marks. But I gotta be honest, Pop, I can't figure out, like the number feels low to me overall in the sense that if Doc Strange 2 is 79%, how is this 80, like those two movies are not five points apart on the critic scale to me. So I don't know what's going on because like the Batman was 85 and this was 84. And I feel like both those movies got kind of sold short all in by the critics, but yeah. the cinema score was an A. 
just mm. slightly below Black Panther's A+, the original ones, and the second best grade that audiences have given a Marvel property since the pandemic. So Shang-Chi got an A, this got an A, and then No Way Home mm. got an A+, which kind of is, <laughs> as we said, it's a little different ballgame. So audiences definitely did like what they saw. Maybe they didn't love it quite as much as Black Panther 1, but they liked it more, I think, than what the critics seem to have. And I kind of agree with that. I, I, I come, I'm, yeah. I'm with that. But it translated to a box office which is good, but not epic. $181 million domestic, just over $330 million worldwide. I am surprised. I thought it would be probably 20% higher than that. I thought they would get more of a kind of posthumous Chadwick Boseman bump to this movie than it seems to mm. have happened. I do think because of that A cinema score, I think this movie's going to hold up well, though. I, I still think it's going to hit a billion dollars. You don't have a lot of competition until Avatar comes out. And that A score tells me that people that went are going to go back and say, you know what? That two and a half hours shouldn't scare you off. See this movie because it's different, it's good, and there's a lot of fun stuff in here. I think this is going to get to a billion. I think the drop-off is going to be less, but I'm still yeah. surprised that this did not break over 200 million. The original was 202 in the opening weekend. I am surprised this one was not able to beat that given the circumstances yeah. and the emotions surrounding it. So I think it's one of those that, look, Marvel's going to make money. That's not the problem. But I think deep in the halls of Disney, slightly disappointed that they didn't, they couldn't come up with a bigger number than that, given this movie seemed good enough to do it. Was it the time? I think that is a major factor. I think audiences are telling this genre in particular, we'll give you three hours for Endgame. Don't give us three hours for anything else. Like, I honestly think it did hurt the, like, we, we, we love the Batman, but both with you and I agree, that's a two and a half hour movie masquerading as a three hour movie. Yeah. And I feel the same about this movie. This is a two hour, 40 minute movie that could have been 215. And I think it actually might've been better if it was 215, because we'll get to what you could have taken out. But I think the audience is just saying like, give us two hour, the Top Gun Mavericks, two hours, like on the nose. You know, Black Adam, for all of its ills, two hours on the nose. I Man. think the audience is saying, we're kind of done with these super long superhero movies unless they are No Way Home, Endgame, culmination films. Now, maybe I'm, I'm going to... Now, I will be very interested to compare when Avatar comes out because that's three hours and 10 minutes, but it's not Marvel. And this is a guy who's Man. made a living with three-hour movies. Let's find out if the audience has kind of just really forsaken a movie of that length. But I do think that was a factor. I do think it was a factor. I think so too. But how do you tell Ryan Coogler? I mean, this is his baby. This is, you know, it's like sort of hands off, you know, and you let him do. Was it? Was it? Are okay. you sure it was Expand. him? Illuminate me. I'm not convinced that his director's cut of this movie would be two hours and 40 minutes. I, there is- You think it would be less? Yes. There is Why do you a say that? Whiff, there is a whiff of the studio making sure that certain things are in this movie for other purposes. And I'm not 100% convinced that Ryan okay. Coogler's vision of how to write this is exactly what we saw on the screen. And I was a little bit surprised at that because we'll get to it, but there was a tinge of, whether it was Kevin Feige or Disney saying, we are not 100% sold that without an established lead in the hero role, this can work the way you want it to work. So we want to mm -hmm. give the audience a few other things. And I think that was one of the most, the least successful pieces of this movie. If I was in that room and I had seen this movie, I would have fought for a, a lesser time, absolutely. My overall impression, Brian, uh, are very similar to yours, Brian. Um, I was expecting a lot more. Um, and we got a lot more. 
And I hope, and I would have wished we got have gotten less. Uh, but overall, I I was entertained, Brian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were some moments of like, really? Okay, whatever. And there was like moments where I'm like 10, 15 minutes straight, can't take my eyes off the screen. There was a lot of those moments. Um, this movie does deserve a second watch. It, it You, my experience was different. If you go, I mean, I don't know, have you, you seen it twice yet? I am contemplating on seeing I it again. I think I would recommend it. I, I, I enjoyed it more the second time because I, I was, in a weird way, I was able, knowing, I was able to kind of separate the movie a bit easier and almost tune out a little bit of the, what I thought was the noise and enjoy what I thought were the high points in the movie, maybe even a little bit more the second time. So I don't know. I, it, it was illuminating to go back. Got it. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to take another watch um listen again i enjoyed when there were those moments where i was like in awe and very engaged i want to see that again to pay a little bit more attention and to, to look at other things as well um but do you uh so out of five stars brian yeah, so uh, is, there, is, there, is there anything else you want to discuss? Well, well, yeah, I do want to let's get back to some overall themes. But I think you, you, I, I had the same impression, which was I think in some ways it's good to go to the ranking and then go back to the content a little bit. So I struggle with exactly where to put this. I'm going to settle on that it's four stars for me. I, I think it's it, it can't be more than that because I. I want to get into the absence of Chadwick Boseman because I thought it was, I am convinced there are moments in this movie that Ryan Coogler wanted you to actively feel him not being there. There are a few scenes that are so, in my mind, unbalanced that he is deliberately, in a way, honoring his memory by saying, do you see and feel how this scene is a bit off because he's not in it. And I I think he, most filmmakers, I wouldn't give them the benefit of the doubt, but I do feel like this is a guy that I could see deliberately scripting a scene almost to draw attention to not having that. But the bottom line is I did feel it. When I say I'm impressed, I'm impressed they came up with as many good scenes and performances as they did given that not a lot of movies lose their lead character in this way and don't and attempt to do this with no yeah. replacement. Yeah. But there were definitely scenes where there was no replacement and it made, it showed like it felt it, like it was like, it's just not quite like, I was like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm imagining him being on the, in this scene and how much better yeah. it would be if he was. And there's just no yeah. getting around that. So I can't give it five or four and a half because that, and then the other piece that I ding them for, like I said, is, you know, I, we'll talk more about the Ironheart situation and, and some of that stuff, but I just think there's too much MCU clutter. I, I you know, there's too much, I don't know why, um, I don't know why Julia Louis Dreyfus was in this movie. I don't know why, I didn't mind, we'll talk about, I think Riri Williams is fine. I don't know why there was so much Ironheart in this movie when they've got their own Oops. show. So to me, though that was like half a star, and then no Chadwick was half a star. And then I'm almost tempted to go a little bit lower, but I just feel like the degree of difficulty was so high. And the performances, in particular, Tena Huerta, I think bring it back up to a four. And because Ryan Cooler. I gotta say, man, he he attempted a few things where I was like, I don't think there's many people in Hollywood that have tr- would have tried it this way, and I I gotta give him credit, like even from that opening scene, and I want to get to that, but like dealing with his death in the way they did in the movie, I thought was very bold and very jarring. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I give it four, but it's one of those like I just tip my cap a little bit to how hard this was to pull off. It's probably a three and a half if I'm being truly objective, but that's where I'm at. Okay. That's why I'm at. I'm at I'm at a three and a half. Uh still celebrating the 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 successes that this movie had in the supporting cast and some of the storylines being uh built and the, the way he sort of honored the Black Panther uh character at the end. Um 
there are a lot of things to cheer for in this movie. Um, but there are also things, you know, the length of it, um, the unnecessary uh, attention to certain other things, too much of one thing um, sort of distracted me from um, really like going crazy over this film. Uh, so that's why I gave it a three and a half. I, and I we'll discuss a little bit more when we go. I agree with you. It is, yeah. it is admittedly a little slow in places in places like this is one mm -hmm. where <clears throat> when it's when it's going it is going at real speed but there's definitely a few se sequences in here where it, it slows down a lot and you can feel it mm -hmm. and that's yeah. to me like the original black panther never really had that but to your point i do think what the original black panther achieved did so with the idea was complex, but it was simpler. It had fewer moving parts to it. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. this is this is pulling in a few different directions. Um, and so mm -hmm. I think I think that played a role in that. But you know, the but like I said, the I, I will say the the Chadwick piece to me, I don't know that they could have done much better in terms of combining like like combining making you feel in a cinematic way how shocking it was for him to pass when nobody knew that he was sick so they they succeeded yeah. in basically imparting that to you in the movie yeah, to, yeah yeah you know basically a moment of silence which is what the the credit open was to I was wondering if they were actually going to invoke because they had the we knew the mural was coming, but I was curious to see would they invoke him, and they did at the very end. They invoked the images of him in the role, and I felt like it was such a nice bookend to that tribute, which then led into. I, I mean, I thought of you know we we'll, we'll pat our, you can pat yourself on the back when we get there, but a, a very special scene that came at the very end. But so I thought that Chadwick piece of this i think ryan cooler can hold his head high because i think they they did this in a classy way and a cinematic way it was a masterful uh performance in directing the audience to feel to be quiet when it needed to be quiet mm -hmm. and it was the silence was deafening you know so and, and he did it and, and he picked his spots and it worked each and every time he did it which was fantastic to 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 sort of experience um it, and and it's the same experience in most people's um audience a theater that they they attended to see the movie everyone was quiet when they when when in those those moments passed and so that showed does that shows that what ryan kugler was uh, just, I can just imagine him just editing and be like, okay, everybody's gonna be quiet right here. Yes, let's do this. 100%. So, so, so his mastery in that is 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 is, is certainly um, well noted. And and do you feel that after this, and I and we've had this conversation on whether or not this will be the case. But after seeing this, Brian, seeing the sort of uh, mixed emotions towards the film, do you think he will get to direct Secret Wars? Well, he said no. Um, his reaction was pretty funny. He basically, okay. when he was asked about it, he said, man, that's crazy. <laughs> 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 and then Kevin Feige apparently said, I would have loved to work with him on anything else, but we ha that's not one that we've... He didn't say no, but he said, like, it hasn't been something that we've approached, that basically, like, he's approached us or we've approached him. And Kuga's yeah, reaction yeah. seemed to be kind of like, that's that's not me. Um, so, it, like yeah. I said, I, I still think if he wanted it, they would give it to him. And I... I, I don't think this movie should should scare them off from that. This is the best Marvel movie. This is the best Marvel movie of this year by far. I don't even. This is like, oh yeah, not yeah, even yeah, like a yeah. conversation. I, I, so, I know. I, and he yeah. still there's still moments in this where it's like he 
and this is an ensemble picture, right? If you think about what an, what a, an Avengers movie is, this is an ensemble picture. This is multiple civilizations. This is, you know, anti-heroes yeah. and heroes. Like, and he's, he's, it's a lot going on. He's extracting high level performances at every level along the way. This would be a credit to his candidacy if he wanted it to be. It's just, mm-hmm. at least for now, it seems like they're, both sides are trying to downplay the possibility that he, he'd be interested. So, yeah, that's our overall impression, Brian. Is there anything else you want to go over before we move on? My last thing is I really firmly think this movie is not a sequel. I, 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 I just... It isn't. It, it's not how I, when I've seen it twice, yeah, yeah. It, it really is not. It's more of a, it definitely is, it's it's almost more of like a spinoff than it is a sequel. It's like, we're just going to take, we're going to take the backdrop that we established over here and we're going to expand something totally new and different over there. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why I, I think when I looked at it as I'm going to just view this as Wakanda Forever 1 starring no more the submariner if i view it that way i enjoy the movie a lot more than if i think about it as the continuing story of black panther from both captain america civil war and black panther which yeah i still think people also are forgetting (laughs) when they talk about how awesome black panther is are forgetting how critical civil war was in my opinion to that first movie being so great yeah because yeah, yeah, of course part of the reason why that first movie feels tight is because they got a lot of that exposition out of the way in yeah. civil war and it was done incredibly well by the russos yeah. so if you if you're being fair and you say okay if i had to take every chadwick scene from civil war mash it together with black panther one well that would be like a two and two hour and 40 minute movie too and that might have felt a little, a little bit long, more yeah, uneven yeah. and more like this one. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of this film. There's, again, there's a lot of mixed reactions, um, more towards the positive side of, of, of uh, in terms of the batch of movies we've gotten in phase four. I think this movie is going to age pretty well, though. Oh, yeah. There are pieces of this movie when it's on TNT over and over again i will stop watch and watch it. it for five to ten minutes how's you how's you yeah that's our show we'll see you next time on the ninja report for the story direction and visuals of wakanda forever